sense of stop building the concrete and the projects and uh, whatever others want to build, wherever they want to build. But it is time that we turn our attention to building people. And in building people, I think this, what we're doing here today, what the minister has organized here today with the staff, is the first step in a good direction of building people, and in particular, building our men in this society. Um, the, the prepared script tells me that throughout the world, throughout the Caribbean, we have a problem with the imbalances where men are dropping out, young boys are dropping out of the school. The statistics are showing more girls are going to university, not only the University of the West Indies, West Indies but also worldwide. I will not pretend to be an expert who have the solutions to all these problems, but we have to start somewhere. And again, I want to emphasize today is a good, a good step in the right direction. You know, if you follow what's going on and you pay attention, sometimes the media believes that we in government don't listen and pay attention, but we do. I, from time to time, not only now since I'm minister, but even before, there are certain blocks where I would stop by and try to talk and find out what's going on. And we have to tackle this together. We have to be able to bring over to the young boys that it is good to learn. It is good to go to school. It is cool to get an education. It is cool for you to learn. Because by learning now, you will earn later. By learning now, you will earn enough later not to be following those on the mopeds with dirty smoke and dirty shirts. But if you learn now, you will earn. And when you grow up, you'll be riding the Harley Davidsons. And those who are on the mopeds will still be on the mopeds. But you will be looking better. You will be looking bigger. But it starts by learning and staying in the school. You know, last night, Sharina came to me and she said, as Prime Minister, I have prepared something for you, but really deep down, I would like for you to give the testimony of your life. I said, Sharina, you need two days for that. <laughs> because yes, we all, nowadays, if you look at those in the position and those who have gotten somewhere, we've all had our challenges. We've all had our rough times. I was one who graduated in 1969 from the Mural School here in St. Martin, the second best out of 10 students. But I couldn't go to study because I didn't have a passport. I didn't have a passport because I was born on Curacao in 1953. In 1950, the law was changed that you carry the nationality of your father until you get to 21, before you can get a Dutch passport. But guess what? I had a choice. I could have go and hang out with the bad boys, because even then they had bad boys. People believe that the whole issue of blocks and the bad boys is not it. Every generation has had bad boys. But guess what? I choose to go not with the bad boys, but to go the hard way and start working and saving money. I was also blessed there was a nun cause to support here who looked at me at the age of 16 and said, you cannot stand this island. You've got to get an opportunity to go to 40 years study. You've got to pray. But it's not only Sister Barty, it was the will and the desire to make something good of myself and to move on. And that's what I did. I left at the age of 16 without a passport and went to Kyrgyzstan. I couldn't get a scholarship. I had all the qualifications to be a good lawyer. But I couldn't go to Holland. But guess what? I did cry, but I didn't go with the bad boys. I stuck. What I had in my mind, that is to become something. I went to Kyrgyzstan at the age of 16, without a passport, without a scholarship. The month before I left to go to Kyrgyzstan, I made $300 in four weeks on a backhoe. Doing the soil testing for one bit before it was built. I left it with $350, $50 my mother gave me. 
and I went to pure south. After three weeks, I went and I started working in a radio station, cleaning the heads, doing the menial jobs. Then I got two radio stations to clean the heads of the tape recorders. And I continued to grow. When I finished engineering school, after four years, I got a degree in electrical engineering. Again, I couldn't get a scholarship to go study for engineer. Again, it looked like the world was closing in. But strong determination told me, no, there's more opportunities. And just when I was about going up the spiral, again, someone picked me and slapped me and threw me against the wall and said, get back to school. And I went back to school, I studied air traffic control. I graduated and started with a class of 16, six dropped out after three months. Ten went to exams, five failed, two passed, three get re-examination, out with a two, one was Marcel Lund. I came back and I served my country. They sponsored me on that course at Martin. And I worked 14 years as an air traffic controller. And then one day, my supervisor, Mr. Young Brown, he said, come go to a meeting. I said, what? He said, an organization for young people. It's called Junior Chamber International, JC. I went and I became a member. And there the book bit me to give back. He taught me about community development, personal development. He taught me the creed of the JC. You got to believe in something. And you got to serve your community. And from there, the bug bit me to serve my community. And guess what? After 23 years, I decided to pull back and kind of retire. And after eight years, in support of retirement, I was called to serve as your prime minister. And here I am today. I share it with you that you can do that too. All of you in here can do it. You have to stay focused. Stay in school. Keep reading. Don't follow the game. It is good to be a nerd. It is good to learn. It is good to work hard. It is good to follow the principles. It is good to have more models and follow them. Nobody bingo, nobody bingo. Vitamalt takes care of you. And now, check under the marked caps for a chance to win prizes. More detail on press. Today I'm honored. I am honored to sit amongst you young men and also amongst the not too young anymore men in the room. Give this opportunity to speak here today and be up, to be amongst kings is one of the greatest things during this month. Young men, you are priority. And that is why this conference was organized. So that persons can take time out to speak to you and you can interact and also help you empower yourself. So I'm telling you here today that there is something within you, about you, all through you that you may not know, but it's there. 
and you have to own it. Many in our society today would like to convince us that we have lost our young individuals. But I will say no, we have not. I will say that yes, we have challenges with a percentage of them, but we have not lost our individuals. I will never speak those words. Because too often we focus on speaking the negative. It's become a trend in our population today and not focus on the positive. And when you speak the negative into the lives of these young men here present today, then what are you telling them? I know a couple of things, even on female, about you young men and about the older ones. Because I've made it a, a point to interact often, to hear your views, and to listen. Listen to your concerns and listen to your challenges. Because when you know who you are, when you know what's inside of you, then is when you can make a difference. So this program here today is not about giving you something. It's about helping you to discover what's already there. It's about you recognizing who you are and embracing it and not letting your circumstances dictate where you are going. I don't know if you're if you know that your potential, your capabilities, and your creativity, that with those three things, there is no limit to where you can reach in life. The difference is knowing how to get there. So I'm asked, telling you that it is not about, getting there is not about how much money you have, how much ruling you have over people, it's not about hurting people, it's not about bullying, it's not about making people feel insecure, it's not about making the next person feel less than you. It's about, it's about the power inside you and you recognizing your powerfulness and your greatness. And bringing yourself to a different level because of recognizing that within yourself. Most of us feel we have it and some of us feel we don't have enough. And we're still searching for it. When I say us, I talk about you gentlemen, maybe talk about us females. <coughs> and sometimes the reasons we can't find it is because we're not certain of what it is we're looking for. What is that power? What is that greatness am I searching for for me, the individual? Well, I'm going to give you a couple of hints to search for. One of the first powers, search for your faith. Faith is like a seed. When you plant it, it grows. And sometimes even before you plant it, you know what it is you're planting. So you're looking to see what's going to bloom. Something else you can look for in terms of finding your power and finding your greatness is finding fellowship. Who are you? associate yourself with? Who are you surrounding yourself with? What type of friends are there to bring you up and what type are there to bring you down? And for those individuals who are determined on bringing you down, I say back away, cut them loose. Cut them loose because for them, if they're not in the same mind frame as you, whereas they want to grow with you and find their greatness, it's all about you have changed, or you're not the same anymore. No, it's not about that. It's about you finding your direction and your place in society. When I look around the room, I'm happy to see that it is not only a room of young individuals, but older men. And to the older men, I say, these young ones are looking towards you. They are looking towards you as role models. They are looking towards you as examples. They are looking towards you in terms of 
Do I want to be like him? How did he get there? What is the positive impact he is demonstrating to me? What is the positive impact he is displaying that I too would like to reach to where he is? Yet when I will say to you, not only do you have to look at yourself as an individual to become the king that is within you, you also have to look towards others. And with this I mean, not only do you respect yourself, but you respect others. Respect, give respect to your mother your sister, your female cousins, colleagues, gentlemen, your partner, your Compulsory education states that all children between the age of 4 and 18 living on St. Martin must attend school. That is the law. Our function is to enforce this law. This law. Uh, for this law to be effective, it means that there are three stakeholders that have to do their part. One, it is the parents. They are responsible to make sure that they enroll the child in a school and make sure that the child attends school. Two, it is also the school's responsibility to make sure that their, the students that are enrolled in their institution attend school and if they're absent for any reason, that they, they have an obligation and a responsibility also to report it to our division. And the third stakeholder, it is government and of which we represent, we make sure that both the schools and the parents do their part to make sure that the children go to school and the children are uh, getting an education. Um, no, we all have the same task. We're all truancy officers, which means that we're um, responsible for um, controlling the absenteeism on St. Martin, the, the people, um, the students that are in school. Um, the compulsory education law uh, went into effect in late uh, 2009. This division was then uh, put together in early 2010. And um, our main task is to reduce absenteeism. So uh, the skipping of classes, um, not showing up for school, um, anything that um, would require a child to be absent that's unexcused. Uh, so excused ab absences, of course, happens. A child is sick or they, oh, for other reasons, cannot be in school. But unexcused absenteeism is something that we're tasked to uh, battle. Yeah. Uh, earlier, my colleague spoke about uh, absenteeism. She stated there was something called unexcused absenteeism and excused absenteeism. Um, there are there are instances where a parent needs to take a child, for example, overseas. The reason for this may vary. Um, for them to do that, they would have to apply for an exemption. Now, this this means that the parent would have to provide a, or the, the guardian a valid passport of themselves and also the student. They have to provide the itinerary of the the itinerary of the flight the, the the trip itself with regard to the airline ticket. And also, it means that they would have to provide proof of the reason why they're going. Usually we grant exemptions for three reasons. One is for immigration purpose. For example, you have to go to a, uh, abroad in order to obtain a visa. Um, for medical reasons, usually this means, uh, for medical reasons, usually it means that you would have to bring in your proof, for example, from SZV. And also for general emergencies, for example, a death in the family or what's not. We would then look at these cases on, we would then look at this situation on a case-by-case -case basis and determine whether that child may be allowed to be taken out of school and may be allowed to travel or even if the child is staying here on the island, if the child may, re may be allowed to stay home. Um, once we've made a decision, for example, if we grant the exemption, we give them a letter and if they're going overseas, they get a letter to take to the school and a letter to present to the immigration at the airport. Um, if a request is denied, and these are, these are, it happens sometimes, it means that they will get a letter saying that they're denied, they will be informed that they're denied, and if the parents still decide that even though they got denied that they're going to travel with the child, that means they're acting unlawful and upon their return, um, certain measures would be taken against that parent. Um, again. 
for applying for exemption, it means that you would have to come to our office located at the Brooks Tower next to the governor's cabinet. And as a VIP building, there's a form that we have here for you to, to fill out. And um, with the documents I've mentioned before, you present those documents to us and then after we'll start the process. Normally it takes two to three days in order for us to make a decision. We do this in consultation also with the institution itself. Anybody bingo? Nobody bingo. It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. In my opinion, everything is perfect and you would be great for the job. But I see here that there's a two-year gap in your resume. What did you do? I was hospitalized for mental illness. Oh, mental illness? I've undergone treatment and I have a wonderful family that supports me. Well, that is good news. No, no, it's fine. I'm recovered. We'll contact you, okay? For a better understanding of mental health and what you can do to stop mental health stigma, please go to the Mental Health Foundation's website at www.mhf-sxm.com. Get a vote on non-confidence, move, run! Don't stay, run! Because they are professional cabinet also. That's right, run! Because they do not want it. If they had wanted it, they would have to do it. Since they are in there, they haven't done anything. When Marcel had to, or the Prime Minister, but for me he's Marcel, when he had to talk, he did not talk. When they were walking out, you know, I think this thing went a long way because my mother was sick. So I had four years I was out of the day because from the day that the lieutenant governor had put the new cabinet ready to go in and one man walked off because maybe he get money. I don't know, but the man upstairs knew. I'm ask him him if he's rich. When I call him, ask the people his taxpayers' money are using. Tell him come and talk to the people. Do you agree by locking the door down completely? Of course I do. Yeah.